Hey there, it's Ben Housel, and here in this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at how we use some of the basic editing tools in Final Cut Pro 10. So we're gonna have a look at how we slip clips, how we slide clips, how we roll edit points, and how we ripple edit points. Now, if these terms don't mean anything to you, then if you're brand new to Final Cut Pro 10, then these tips and tricks will be really useful. So we're looking at the very basic editing techniques that we use to refine our timeline once we've created a rough cut. So if these tips and tricks are interesting to you for Final Cut Pro 10, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button. Otherwise, let's dive into how we work with some of the basic editing tools in Final Cut Pro 10. So once we have our clips down on the timeline, then we need to be able to manipulate and control those edits to improve the flow of our edit. So we're gonna be having a look at some of the key tools uh, for doing that with. So if you come to your tool menu here, and um, basically the two tools that we're gonna be using are the select tool and the trim tool. The select tool will allow us to do ripple edits, so basically to trim clips and with the magnetic timeline turned on, then it will trim clips and kind of move all those other clips on the timeline, which is called a ripple edit. And we'll have a look at that in a second. And then we're gonna be working with a trim tool, which allows us to do roll edits on edit points, slip edits, and slide edits. And we'll have a look at those different edits as we kind of refine um, this very short edit that we have down on the timeline. So firstly, the select tool, the shortcut for that is A, which is always a useful shortcut to remember if you're ever on the blade tool and you're cutting something, then after you've cut something, you don't wanna keep the blade tool selected because you might accidentally chop up your timeline completely. So tapping the A key will always take you back um, to the select tool. So we'll just undo that. We'll go to edit, undo. We don't wanna blade our clips yet. So we've got our selection tool selected. And on our timeline now, um, I've basically dragged down the full clip. So if I come to my first edit point here, you can see my end point for that clip is actually red. So that means that I'm at the media limit for that clip. And that's really important for things like transitions and also just knowing that we can't add any extra media to that clip. Um, also with the select tool, if we select a clip, we'll see the duration of that clip up here in the middle of our interface. So we can see this is six seconds long. So as I'm dragging with my selection tool, you can see I'm changing the out point of that first clip. So you can see on the left hand side there in my viewer, we're kind of moving to a different point there. So what I like to do when I'm editing is just play something through and then often think, well, I've got the fact that he's walking along a beach at this particular point. So we'll trim that down a little bit shorter and then play it back through. So basically, if you can get that flow nicely, then that's where to cut. So basically we don't wanna leave clips on screen uh, too long. It will kind of make the edit boring for the viewer. So we've got this guy smiling at us and again, we can trim it down and I'm gonna trim this down, but I'm going to deliberately kind of miss the point of that clip and we'll use some of the other edit tools to kind of move things into place so we'll come back to that one a little bit later so these clips now are one second and 21 frames long and the second one is just over one second and we can see that up in the middle here when we've got those selected so that's a basic edit with the selection tool so now if we go down to the, the trim tool, then with the trim tool, we can basically move individual edit points. So what we're not doing here is changing the overall duration of our edit. So as I'm moving with the trim tool here, you can see the timeline doesn't get any longer. So if I go back to my selection tool and just deselect everything, my timeline is 34 seconds and eight frames. When I use the select tool to trim down a clip from either end i'm shortening my clip but now with the trim tool when i come to an edit point and i roll that edit so this is called a roll edit i'm basically keeping that 26 seconds and six frames all the time so i'm not changing the overall duration of my edit i'm just changing where that clip lands, so basically where the edit point lands between those two clips. So if I play this through now, you can see we're moving from this guy on the beach to here and surfing. And if we move this back, then on the right hand side, you can see we're coming earlier in the clip there. So the surfing clip is, is getting longer and the first clip is getting shorter. So that's a roll edit. Um, and we can use that to kind of get the flow of the edit going a bit nicer. Now the next edit point is quite an interesting one. So I'm gonna come back to my selection tool. So with this edit, we've got the surfer coming up the wave 
from this angle. It's the same surfer, but a different wave. And if we play this through, then at some point we just kind of lose the end of the wave. So actually if I stretch this out, you can see he does surf a little bit more, but the wave kind of closes out and the wave stops. So actually if we come to somewhere around about here and I use the select tool to ripple, trim down the end of that clip, and then I come to my next clip at the beginning of this, it's totally out of focus. So he comes down here and I zoom in. So we'll go for this moment here, which kind of matches the end of uh, this clip. So it's a different wave, but uh, to the naked eye or to the casual viewer, it's probably not gonna be noticeable. So basically he's in a similar position and if we trim down the beginning of this clip now and play that through, then it flows quite nicely. So we've basically put those two clips together from two different angles and used the ripple tool to do that. And there's a little bit, if we come through here, actually that's pretty good as a first attempt. So one thing we can do here to kind of modify this as well is if we zoom in um, we can now select the trim tool and we can decide where we want that to actually change so if we want to have a bit more of the second clip we can move a bit more back here in time so we're cutting the first clip sooner and it still looks pretty good and I'm going to hold down shift and tap Z to kind of zoom out. So basically we've used those two tools to find the right point to cut between those two clips. So basically those are the two uh, kind of main edits that you'll need to do when you're kind of trimming down clips and positioning clips. The trim tool has some other options in there as well. So with the trim tool, if I click in the middle of this clip, you can see rather than editing the clips either side, I'm editing the in and out point of that same clip. So I can basically decide where I want this to kind of start and finish. I might start with him when his foot's towards me and there's gonna be more of a motion backwards there. So you can see I'm basically deciding where I want that clip to end or I could end it as he starts to, to walk away. But I definitely wanna avoid my shaky camera at the end here. So. We'll trim it there and he moves away and then we're onto the wave and that movement from shot to shot is often quite nice to keep as well. So here for this one, what I want to do is I want to end the shot right when his foot lands on the sand. So footsteps are quite a nice thing to, to cut on. Um, when you watch someone walking, you start to count so you can feel them walking as you're watching it. So it's quite a good way of getting the rhythm of an edit. So if we get this so it lands off the foot, so maybe his foot's in the middle there, we'll play this through. So it doesn't feel like we've finished that footstep. But if we move this to the end of the footstep here, so he actually takes a full step in the shot, then it feels like we've kind of moved more fluidly into the next shot. So let's grab our select tool so we can trim down the beginning of this one a little bit. So I'm going to start at the top of this wave. So we've got about six seconds of surfing here. It might be too much. So we'll play this through. He moves away. We move to some surfing. And then the close up of the surfing. Yeah, so we'll trim this down a little bit more. Um, we kind of know at this point that he's surfing this wave and then we go to the different shot and then we're done and now we can use the select tool to come to the end and trim it down at the end so the different edits we've done there are basically the ripple edit when we're just modifying that one edit point um, and trimming down shortening or lengthening the clip and then the roll edit where we're using the trim tool to select both clips so the out point of the first clip and the in point of the next clip and we can see that up in the viewer that we have those two clips that we're editing. And we can roll the edit point without changing the overall duration 
of our timelines edit, we might decide to have the first clip a little bit shorter or the second clip a little bit shorter. We can kind of make that refined decision without having a knock-on effect down the timeline, which is really handy if you've got things synced up in time further down the timeline. And then if we come back to the select tool, just click away and deselect everything. Um, oftentimes, if I've got things selected, I'll use the shortcut Shift, Command, and A. That will also deselect everything. So one other way that I can trim and edit as well is by using some keyboard shortcuts. And there's a lot of different ways of doing this, but we're going to look at one particular way when we're actually using these tools selected here. So there's some other shortcuts as well that we're not going to go through just to kind of keep this uh, video length a bit manageable. So we'll select the selection tool and I'm going to select the out point of this clip. So on the keyboard, I can use the left and right less than or greater than buttons on the keyboard just to the right of the M key um, to move my edit point forwards and backwards by one frame at a time. I can also, if I'm on edit, edit point as well, use the square brackets to change between those different edits as well. And if I actually don't have anything selected, I can select that edit point by using those left and right square brackets. So I can select my in point here, and then I can use the greater than symbol to move this edit point forwards or the less than symbol to move it backwards. If we want to move our edit point by a large increment, I can hold down shift and it will move it by 10 frame increments. So I can basically trim 10 frames off my clips by holding down shift and tapping the greater than or less than symbol on the keyboard. And there's just a couple more things to kind of look at here for the select and trim tool. So with the trim tool, we've seen that we can slip our edit here. So we can slip the in point and out point and at the same time not change the duration of the overall edit that we have. And then also if we hold down the Alt key, we can slide that edit. So we can slide that whole clip on the timeline too. So basically it's changing the out point of the clip before it and the in point of the clip after it. We can move this clip like this by tapping the P key, but it's going to make a slug in this spot too, um, which we don't necessarily always want. You don't want gaps in your edit. So using the trim tool and then holding down the alt key will allow you to slide that edit. So one other thing that we'll just have a look at here, I'm just going to add a title above this clip. So control and T will add my basic title and I'm going to trim this down. So I have kind of a short title here. So I've got my title on screen. Now if I, with my trim tool, decide to move my clip around, you can see that it's actually moving the title as well. So basically when I'm slipping my clip here, it's moving the title. I may not want that. I may just want to slip the clip on the main storyline here. If I hold down the tilde key to the top left of your keyboard, just below escape and click and hold that, you can see now I can make that same edit, but it overrides that connected clip. So however many connected clips we've got, it's always going to override and stop you from moving that title. So we want to keep the title in the same place. But we might want to change the clip. So I'm just going to hold shift and command and tap A to deselect everything. And we'll come back to the select tool. So I'm going to tap A to do that. So there's a few examples of the ripple, roll, slip and slide edits that we can do on our timeline. And these are really useful things to do as you're thinking about your edits. And I'd, I'd really encourage you just to throw a few clips down on the timeline and play around with those different tools, see what's happening in the viewer, um, see how the timeline is behaving and run through some of the different shortcuts that I've used. I'll leave a list of the shortcuts um, down below for everyone to, to kind of follow and have a look at. And if you have any questions about Final Cut Pro, about editing on the timeline, then do leave a comment below and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.